District Attorney Alvin Bragg is insisting that his office continues to investigate Donald Trump for possible crimes relating to his finances and taxes. But here's the thing. I don't believe it. I think this investigation is over and the DA is just trying to save face with his liberal constituents. In February, veteran prosecutors Mark Pomerantz and Kerry Dunn, who'd been leading the Trump investigation, resigned from the DA's office. In a memo from Pomerantz to DA Bragg, clearly intentionally leaked to the New York Times, he had written, quote, you've devoted significant time and energy to understanding the evidence we have accumulated with respect to Trump's financial statements, as well as the applicable law. You, referring to the DA, have reached the decision not to go forward with the grand jury presentation and not to seek criminal charges at the present time. The investigation has been suspended indefinitely. Of course, that is your decision to make. I do not question your authority to make it, and I accept that you've made it sincerely. However, a decision made in good faith may nevertheless be wrong. I also don't believe that suspending the investigation pending future developments will lead to a stronger case or dispel your reluctance to bring charges. No events are likely to occur that will alter the nature of the case or dramatically change the quality or quantity of the evidence available to the prosecution. In other words, the prosecutor who had spent a year looking into the case says, in essence, that there's no more evidence to gather. He wanted a prosecution. The DA didn't think that they had the evidence. Now, Pomerantz had been recruited to the former DA to work on the case and Kerry Dunn argued successfully before the U.S. Supreme Court to get access to Trump's tax records and other records. These two were not going to walk away from an active inquiry unless they knew it had stalled out. Yet the DA, Bragg, wants his angry constituents to believe, don't worry, it's not over. We are every day uh, following up on new evidence that we've, we've secured. And I mean, investigations are not linear, right? So we are following the leads in front of us, and that's what we're doing. We're doing that right now, and that's the, what we're saying in, the, in, 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 our, in our statement today. The investigation is very much you know, ongoing. Obviously, Mr. Pomerantz you know, has his opinion about how you know, the investigation should unfold or could unfold. This is what we're actively doing each and every day in this building. So you're still interviewing witnesses? We are, as our, as our statement today says, we're you know, interviewing witnesses, reviewing documents, following up on evidence that has not previously been um, um, analyzed and looked at or secured by the office. Come on. How long does Bragg intend to keep up this charade? I said at the time that Pomerantz resigned, investigation's over. Dashed are the liberal dreams of a Trump criminal indictment in Manhattan, snuffed out by a liberal district attorney, no less. So why is Bragg pretending that the investigation is ongoing and that they're still interviewing witnesses? I don't even know exactly what that really means. And you saw that he paused there, right, when he was asked that question. At what point does he tell Donald Trump that the investigation is over? I believe any target of a criminal investigation is entitled to that. Will he do that? Joining me now is Dan Alonso, who was once chief assistant district attorney under former Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance. Dan, welcome back to the show. Appreciate it. All right. Am I being too strident here in, in, in so um, definitively declaring that this investigation is over? You're, first of all, thanks for having me, Dan. Um, I, you're not being too strident, although I will say that I'm not willing to go quite as far. I think that you're probably right, but right now he has said that he is still investigating. I think the likeliest conclusion is the case was dead in the water weeks and weeks ago. Um, clearly, they, were, they had made the decision to charge Trump or to present charges to the grand jury against Trump. They had made the decision to impanel a special grand jury to hear the evidence, and that stalled out because of the DA. It's incredibly unusual for that to happen. It's so unusual, I've never seen it before. And so now to say, okay, but we're still investigating, I think it's probably true in the most technical sense. I think, you know, Alvin Bragg's unlikely to be lying through his teeth, pants on fire style. Uh, but right. is he going through the paces? I mean, you're not you're not too far off from what's likely the truth. But right now, this is what he's saying. We don't have a, we don't have a basis to contradict him literally. Right. It's probably you're likely correct. That's what I'm saying. yeah, that's fair to say that you know uh, they're they're still talking to people. But the, the grand jury's term was expected to expire this month. Do we know if that was extended? 
Oh, I think that's almost not, that's not possible because what Dunn and Pomerantz did, this is a little wonky, but they stopped on their own initiative presenting evidence to the grand jury when they sort of smelled that Bragg was going to pull the plug. That's because under state law, you don't want to present too much evidence so somebody could say later that you just decided to pull a case um, after you would, you know, you knew you were going to lose it. So they stopped early. So this is there's no way this grand jury has been really hearing hearing the case at all. If they wanted to indict him, they would now have to impanel a new grand jury or use up all the time of the regular one month grand juries that sit. Let me ask you this. Take let's take the politics out of this entirely. I don't care whether you love Donald Trump or you hate Donald Trump. The bottom line is that Donald Trump was the target of a very serious investigation by the Manhattan DA's office. If we take the name Trump out of this, does someone who is the target of an investigation, is that person entitled to know when the investigation has concluded if they're not going to bring charges against that person? You know, Dan, the human answer is, of course they are, but the technical answer is not under the law. There's no requirement that the DA say, hey, we've stopped investigating you. Usually a person can't really breathe uh, easy until the statute of limitation expires. However, in a case like this, whether it's Trump or not, I think in any kind of case of public importance where it's already known the person's being investigated, it is perfectly appropriate and frankly expected of a prosecutor to tell the public if he has decided not to proceed with charges and to do that in a, you know, with a summary of the reasons why he wouldn't do that. Uh, the best example of that would be like a police involved shooting or a public corruption case like when Mayor de Blasio was being investigated. You want to tell the public they have a right to know and you're not doing anything like outing somebody who's under investigation and nobody knew. Everybody knows Trump's being investigated. So yes, he should definitely be explaining it when the time comes that he declined. Has he declined already? He says no. Right. But, but would you agree with me that the, the most likely scenario is he doesn't want to admit it to his constituents who are, who are furious about this, who've, who've read the, the Pomerantz letter, who you know, don't want to believe that he's not going to bring charges. And so he wants things to calm down a little bit and is pretending as if the investigation is still active and ongoing. I agree with you, unfortunately, that that's the likeliest scenario because of the way this proceeded. The idea that they would resign, pull the plug on a grand jury presentation, tell him that there's really no reasonable prospect of new evidence. And now to have the DA saying we're investigating new witnesses, we're looking at new documents, right. it, it doesn't make a ton of sense. So, yes, I agree with you. Look, I, I think this stuff is so important to take the politics out of it, which is what I always try and do, which is to say, you know, whether you th I don't I don't know what the evidence was. I haven't seen the evidence. Um, and as a result, I can't have an opinion about whether they should have indicted him or not. But what I can say is that it is clear to me they are not going to indict him. And if that decision has been made, I think they ought to simply tell him that the investigation is over instead of pretending that this is still very active. But anyway, we shall see. Dan Alonso, stick around. I want to get your take on this uh, this next story because coming up for Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.